Inland now to St. Albans, Hertfordshire, where perfection is attained in another sphere, the cultivation of orchids, where leading orchid authority David Sander produces new specimens by hybridization or cross-pollination. After this process, the pedigree names of both parent species are noted, and a record made later for the stud book of orchids, the Sanders list of orchid hybrids, which, together with the Jockey Club stud book, are the only two stud books in existence dating back 100 years. In the laboratory, exhaustive precautions are taken to ensure that the seeds about to be sown remain uncontaminated. The seeds are sterilized in diluted calcium chlorate, enclosed in a tube and stopper already made highly sterile. These safety measures are never relaxed for a moment, and when the seeds are sown on this jelly-like sterile substance, which, by the way, contains all the sustenance required by the future orchids for the next few months, the operation has to be carried out over a steaming bowl of water so that no foreign bodies can descend into the flask. Between six to ten months later, the seedlings, these happen to be eight months sown, are removed from the flask and individually pricked off into a nursery pan of specially prepared compost, derived from fern roots and moss. It's difficult to realize that one of these tiny plants may well eventually prove to be a champion and worth a small fortune. Even at this stage, great care in cleanliness and culture is needed if the small plants are to be raised to maturity in about five years, when their blooms will be first seen. But they're more than compensated for that trouble by beautiful specimens like this Arides fielding guy. Slipper orchids like these last up to ten weeks in bloom, the sweetly scented Varida suavis, found in the West Indies, and perhaps the most popular, Cattleya hybrid. Just a few of more than 15,000 known species of this exotic plant that captivates the heart of women from Iceland to New Zealand. The orchid. <laughs>